In the early 1900s, a technologically advanced alien race, known as the Chimera, arrived in Russia. By the early 1950s, they'd conquered most of Europe and only a few outposts of human resistance remained. As you, through the eyes of Sergeant Nathan Hale, fight the Chimera, you come across some interesting Chimera technology. Such as the Augur Rifle. Its projectiles has the ability to penetrate solid objects. But even more interesting is that the resulting damage increases as the projectile passes through an object. So, would such a weapon be possible to create with currently known technology? We will go through the science behind the auger rifle and find out. Let's take a look at what we know. The auger rifle is a Cameron weapon carried by the Steelheads, an enemy significantly more powerful than the standard Cameron foot soldiers. If you manage to defeat one, you can retrieve the auger rifle and use it yourself. Its projectiles penetrate solid objects, but is stopped by and does damage to organic lifeforms, such as humans and the Chimera. As the auger projectile penetrates a solid object, the resulting damage it inflicts is increased. According to Intel, the auger rifle fires heavy blasts of radiation. So that narrows it down quite a bit. There are only so many different types of radiation, we just have to find the one that fits the description. So let's start by figuring out what type of radiation we're dealing with. We can do that quite easily by looking at the penetrating power of different types of radiation. Alpha radiation consists of helium nuclei and can be stopped by a thin sheet of paper. Beta radiation consists of electrons and can be stopped by a sheet of aluminum. But in order to stop gamma radiation, which consists of high energy photons, you need a thick slab of lead. With this, alpha and beta radiation can be ruled out immediately. So, does gamma radiation fit the description? It can penetrate most materials with ease, it is extremely dangerous to humans in large doses, but does it increase in destructive power as it penetrates non-biological materials? And if so, how does it do it? We will find a clue in the weapon's name. This is an auger drill, a spiral-shaped drill that has its roots in the Middle Ages and is still used today to dig deep holes in the ground. This has nothing to do with the auger rifle. But let's change the pronunciation to auger and see where that takes us. Let's talk about the auger effect. Discovered by Lise Meitner and published in 1922, as an atom is exposed to gamma radiation, it can undergo the following process. A photon collides with an electron in an atom's innermost electron shell, ejecting the electron from the atom. There is now a vacancy in the atom's innermost electron shell. This vacancy will cause an electron from an outer shell to take its place. As the electron jumps down into a lower energy state, energy is released. This energy is transferred to an electron in the outermost shell, a valence electron, ejecting it from the atom. This electron is called an Auger electron. Now, if you wonder why it's called the Auger effect and not the Meitner effect, it's because this phenomenon was also discovered by Pierre-Victor Auger one year later. So, as the gamma radiation from the Auger rifle interacts with atoms in whatever material it penetrates, we can be quite sure that Auger electrons are created. So now, in addition to gamma radiation, we also have beta radiation. As the Auger projectile penetrates a solid object, the radiation profile is expanded from just gamma radiation to both gamma and beta radiation. How nicely it all came together. Except, beta radiation is simply not that dangerous. I tried to make sense of it, but unless you're in direct contact with a beta radiation source, the damage will probably not be more severe than a sunburn, and a decent layer of clothing will probably prevent that too. So, back to square one. Almost. So there is actually another type of Auger effect the hypernuclear Auger effect. It works similarly, but occurs inside the atom's nucleus. 
the nucleons, protons and neutrons, in the nucleus are also distributed across different energy levels, just like the electrons. So, when a nucleon is de-excited into a lower energy level, energy is released. This energy can be absorbed by a valence neutron, which is then ejected from the nucleus. So, now you're probably thinking, Hold on, the hypernuclear OJ effect cannot occur in a regular nucleus, and you would be correct. It can only occur in a hypernucleus, which is similar to a regular nucleus but contains at least one hyperon. And a hyperon is a baryon that contains at least one strange quark, which is the third lightest of the quarks, and a baryon is a subatomic particle that contains an odd number of valence quarks but no less than three. The takeaway here is that the hypernuclear Rj effect produces neutrons instead of electrons, with hypernuclear atoms as fuel. So, would neutron radiation make sense? Well, neutron radiation has exceptionally high penetrating power, for some materials even higher than gamma radiation. And for humans, it is the most dangerous type of radiation per absorbed dose. But now for the final question. Does it increase in destructive power as it penetrates non-biological materials? One of the use cases for neutron beams is identifying unknown materials. This is done in a process called prompt gamma neutron activation analysis, in which the neutron beam is aimed at an unknown material and how it interacts with the material is analyzed. Neutrons can interact with the material in two ways. One. Absorption. Atoms in the unknown material can absorb neutrons, in which case energy is released in the form of gamma radiation. This resulting radiation can then be analyzed with a gamma radiation spectrometer, which should give a good indication of what material is being examined. 2. Scattering. The neutrons can simply collide with the nuclei in the material in which case the neutrons transfer some of its kinetic energy to the nuclei. If we assume that the Auger rifle does indeed emit bursts of neutrons, this is essentially what we're doing when we're firing it through a solid object, aside from the analysis part. So, when an Auger projectile has passed through a solid object, we're left with the following. Unaffected neutrons. Most of the neutrons passes right through the material without interacting with it. Gamma radiation. Emitted from the atoms in the object that has absorbed a neutron. Lower energy neutrons. Neutrons that has collided with nuclei in the object, thereby losing some of its energy. So, the unaffected neutrons are just as dangerous as if they were to come straight from the rifle. Now, the gamma radiation that appears is dangerous, but it's probably still less dangerous than being hit by an unobstructed neutron burst. And lastly, lower energy neutrons. Now, this is where things get a bit contraintuitive. For conventional weaponry, more power means more damage. But for neutron radiation, this is not necessarily the case. There is actually an energy sweet spot where neutrons does the maximum amount of damage to humans. This is the energy level at which human tissue is most likely to absorb a neutron. So, the Auger rifle is most certainly designed to emit neutrons with energies a bit above the human damage maximum. And this is probably to ensure that the projectiles have enough penetrating power, so that it can pass through any barricade with ease. But each time the Auger projectile penetrates a solid object, the average neutron energy moves closer to maximum damage. <laughs>